What's up boys? Welcome back to another guide. Finally today we're gonna have uh, the scouting guide you guys asked for so many times already. It's gonna be a TVP scouting guide. So first uh, I I'm, just, I'm just gonna talk through some things about theory about scouting and stuff and, and talk about some things you guys might not necessarily understand about scouting and then after that I'm gonna show you guys a replay of mine and, and talk through the things I look for, talk through the things I scout and how I react and stuff, okay? So first of all i, I want to say something about uh about scouting that that might be a little bit annoying and it's that scouting kind of differs at certain levels of play for example in my level of play if someone does like the parting blink all in they always have to have a robo by three minutes uh, three minute five three minute ten maybe at latest and recently i saw a replay from one of you guys i think it was like 4.5 km or something like that where the guy did the all in and then you made the robo at four minutes. So when it comes to scouting, sometimes you have to adapt it a little bit to your own MMR. Like if I tell you guys, this build works perfectly if you make a robo at 305, that's still true, but it's still possible that people do the build wrong, or I don't know, they make a mistake, or they try a mind game and they do it otherwise. So you have to, it's very important that you consistently scout you can't just rely on one scout. Uh, I, I have an example here for one of my viewers. I actually uh, analyzed this replay in one of my uh, other videos. And I want to tell you guys that it's really important to consistently scout and also to know different things to look for. Like every build, every strategy has more than one sign to you know it being that strategy, I guess. So a, a good example here is um, my guy over here, my Terran bro, this is it. He scouted this, no nexus, double gas, um, and to me, if I would see this, if I play a game, if I'm coaching when I see this, this is 100% a one base all in, right? But this guy just doesn't know how to do his build order, and that's where I'm talking about that it's really important to consistently scout. Now, for example, this, this would be a one base all in. But you see the second pylon here. Things like pylon count, uh, worker count, you know, gas count. S sometimes they could have 16 gas, but these gases are fresh. Now these guys are absolutely not fresh. He just has too much gas. But if you scout this base and you see double gas, that's a sign for one base all in with a no nexus, right? Because we haven't seen the nexus yet. But then if you see the second pylon, that's a sign that it's just a weird build and not necessarily a proxy. So if you look at what our boy saw, even if it looks like a one base cylinder, if you look at other signs, in this case, the second pylon, you can actually know what it is and you don't have to worry about it that much. Now, luckily our guy didn't make a bunker here, but this shows that consistently scouting is, is uh, very important. For example, the Reaper should be heading out not to scout again because there's so much gas. E either this guy did a really bad build or there must be something up in the end. And right now you can not tell, you can make a guess, but it's really important to just keep scouting and not take one sign for granted. This is very important. And I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys my game now. It's again, I'm playing Christian in a tournament and I'm gonna tell you guys, you know, uh, how my scouting process worked and what I looked for and stuff. Okay guys, so here uh, I played a game against Christianer in the in the OSC a few, a few days ago, I believe. And uh, I'm just gonna show you guys some basic scouting, what I do what I actually look at and what I react. Because, you know, a, a lot of people don't really understand what you see. They only notice the obvious things like, oh, he's, the Terran's looking for a dark shrine. The, 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 the Protoss is scouting uh, if, it's, if it's an SCP pool. But there's actually a lot of things you can scout and a lot of things that are very telling. Uh, something people don't really pay attention to, for example, is the worker count. Like sometimes you could scout someone's natural and in one game they have 12 probes and the other one they have five. And those are not things you actually look for. And I feel like when I say it like that, it feels very obvious, right? It's like, well, duh, we have seven less probes. But if, you, if you're not looking for it, um, you will actually probably not notice it. If, if you don't pay attention to how many probes someone has, if you don't click on someone's gas to see how much gas he mined, if you didn't know, guys, you can do that. Then those are all details that you're gonna miss. If you don't count the amount of pylons someone has, you know, from, from the Protoss point of view, for example, a lot of 
high level Protoss players don't even check if it's a Rax first or a Gas first, which you can easily see by the Gas timing. If you're a bit more tryhard, you can even know it by the Barracks timing, I think. And that's instantly gonna tell you if the guy is gonna go for fast tech or for uh, just, just a regular build up. And th those are, those are, it sounds like small details, but those are actually things that really high level players also don't pay attention to, but they do tell you a lot of things. So in this game, I'm going for a very simple, very basic scouting timing. It's a, it's an 18 SCV scout followed by the Reaper. So for me personally, well, once again, guys, you, you have to kind of adapt this to your level for me. Uh, in pretty much every game, I feel like Christiana is sometimes a little bit more cheesy, so I'm gonna go up the main. But in pretty much all the cases, this is all I want to see. Because for me now, uh, there is nothing left to see really. I, I, the second pylon is important and the Nexus timing is important. This is a normal Nexus timing. Whether it's core first or Nexus first, that doesn't bother me at all. Because I always go for the safety bunker and I, I'm safe against both. So I see the Nexus is down, meaning it's not a one base. And I see the second pylon. That's all I want to see, really. If, if I see the Nexus, once again, I know it's not one base. I don't have to do anything drastic. If I see the second pylon, it's either uh, not a proxy Stargate. Or they spent minerals to uh, fake that it's not a proxy Stargate. Because they can always proxy with a third pylon, right? But that, that's the information I already have right now, just by seeing this. And then the Reaper Scout is, is the very important follow-up. Now, uh, you know, on my YouTube, we, we have the meme that I always lose the Reaper. But the best way to scout for me is, is this. If it's a core first, by the way, uh, the Adept is actually going to be finished in a lot of cases when you enter. Just a small tip. So try to not walk up the ramp. Because what happens when you walk up the ramp is that they can get two hits off before the Shade and then your Reaper is gone. So jumping off a cliff is mostly fine if you can react on time if the adept shoots you. Uh, walking up the ramp is a bit more dangerous. So here, what do you see? I usually try to look for tech and well, it's right here, you would say. And this is obvious if, if I want to scout, it's here. But when I go in with the Reaper for the first time, I actually don't expect there to be a tech building already. So what I mostly try to do is be annoying with the first Reaper and uh, avoid the gateway. That's why I'm going all the way on the left because I don't want to be near the gateway when the adept finishes, right? So yeah, normally guys, if you're not a if you're not a show off like me, just just jump down. Don't even try. I, I'm always trying to be annoying, so I'm just going around here, and I'm I'm gonna save it. But this is very risky to do, so please just uh, jump down. Now, after this. Or so, sometimes you'll see the tech before, but after this is very important to go for that tech scout and you need to be smart about it. Now on this map, for example, they will very often keep a unit here so you can go this route and jump up here. A, a stalker doesn't stop a reaper from scouting tech guys. A stalker and an adept does. So you just have to make sure to not run into both units later on. Now, uh, as I wanted to say, a good scout, a really good scout timing is to scout I'm, I'm gonna back up a little bit for you guys. Do we have a... Okay, not here. I backed out a little bit too far. Let's skip forward. Blah, 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 blah. So normally you jump down, right? And then you wanna go in uh, roughly at 50% of the second gateway unit. Because one gateway unit can't stop your scout no matter what. If, if my Reaper was here and that is here and I right click my Reaper here, it, it's, it's gonna see the tech. Obviously, if, if he has some city build it in the back, it's a bit more risky, so always try to avoid it. But this is usually the perfect scout timing. You, your Reaper, you're not showing off, so your Reaper is outside here. And then you jump up at roughly half of the second gateway unit. And you know when it is because you will see the first gateway unit pop out, right? And that's the, the best scout timing for tech, usually. I'm, I'm usually a bit more YOLO with my, with my Reapers, as you guys know. But if you want to have it you know stable good scout timings then that is the one i would recommend for you guys now as you can see a stalker can't kill a reaper in one go and then well my, my reaper took some damage but you're always going to have to send that reaper in at some point and then i'm going to tell you guys uh, what i'm looking for here there's a few things once again if you want to really get a sure scout you make this into a hellion and you scout with that 
otherwise if, if you're confident enough or, or you're okay being a little bit greedy you can use just the reaper now there's a few things you look for with this reaper and the first one is obviously the direct tech building which i think you should be able to find most of the time there, there are some maps where you um you can't really get info all the time so here i see a robo and a robo bay uh very straightforward this is the first uh, level of scouting you get pretty much after the SCV and what my reaction to this is uh, I would say the most common reaction to this would be uh, maybe faster CC because you can't really attack someone with uh, mass bio arming that goes fast Colossus uh, tanks good against Robo Bay but my reaction this game is actually uh, I, I, I don't recommend this one by the way the Liberator this was just an experiment but what I in my opinion is very good is to get a cyclone in this case because if they go for a sprash row bay they can't really attack you but what they can do is go for a colossus drop this is actually what i was expecting so i'm gonna get the tech lab on the factory and i'm not doing this to get tanks it's to get a cyclone because the cyclone is gonna deter the warpism completely and uh, and that's it now another very important part is uh, i don't know if you guys uh you probably watched some korean terrans here and there and you will notice they're always very aggressive and you're wondering well, why is he this aggressive why doesn't he just play a passive macro game sometimes the terran is the better player and he starts going all aggressive and you're like why now a big reason guys is being aggressive is scouting this is a a huge important point that people don't really think about but being aggressive is scouting i always found that in in in, in my entire career I was not a player that got uh, upset a lot by, by quote-unquote weaker players, whereas my, my peers actually struggled more with this. And I always thought it was because of my aggressive style, because here, my Liberator is being aggressive, right? This is a weird opener, it doesn't do damage, and you would think, what a useless Liberator. But what did I see already? A lack of a fourth gas. That means if you go Colossus and no fourth gas that means you're actually not going to make a lot of tech units so this is going to be very zealot heavy in other words i'm already going to play defensive later on and probably going to start some liberators instead of vikings for their first push now this all sounds very advanced and it, it doesn't have to be this complicated but you see just by me sending this liberator and taking 72 damage which mo most people think is useless i already won um some important information for me being aggressive if this is a mind drop guys it's the same story if you run by four hellions it's the same story you can see the unit count you can see the probe count you can see the gas count you can if you run faster or uh, deeper into the base you can see if there's a forge you can see if there's a twilight you can see if there's more gates on the way all these things are information and that's a big part of actually being aggressive at least with some harassment units early on it's not just about the damage it's about all the information that you win a mind drop for example well in this case my my liberator saw it too but a mind drop would almost always spot if there's actually a third base or not if you play against blink for example and your attack spots that there's no base you instantly know that you're probably being attacked or that he's actually attacking up even more on two bases and even if your mind drop does nothing that's really useful information that you're winning there so the next time you're actually mind dropping the next time you're sending a liberator a landed viking whatever guys how did that not shoot by the way whatever whatever harassment you send remember to pay attention to the information it gives you and don't think that it's just uh a, a few probes you're kidding this liberator is going to end up doing pretty all right three probes and a stalker oh not not the stalker of course doesn't uh, two shot that anymore ripped the 2016 liberator but i did win a lot of information now you see exactly what is what i said he was going to do he's not going to attack up he's going to go very zealot heavy he's making mass gateways mass zealots if this was a fourth gas, I knew it was either going to be double upgrades or that he was going to play Stalker Colossus, like Stalker Heavy, slow army, slow strong army, but late expand. But now just with that Liberator, I actually kind of know what's going on already. And that's, that's what scouting is. It's just consistently checking. S sometimes a mind drop, honestly, is just a disguised scout. It's like... You're pretending to do damage while actually scouting, you know? Like, how often does your mind drop really get in, guys? It's um, it's all about that consistency in scouting. That's also why why drops are good. Like, right now, I think it would be a decent idea to send a double drop. Maybe I'm a bit afraid of an attack and I'm, I'm passive. And But now, here we go. Drop seems to be going out anyway. 
and and that's uh like i feel like it's a lot of information so i don't know if you have to if you have to watch this again uh don't don't worry about it just do it but you know right now from my point of view i hope i get, I, I explained to you guys how how important the scouting actually is I feel like if you watch this game in in a casted point of view, you you watch me against Cristiano on the cast, you, you may think I didn't do anything this game, you know. But in reality, I scouted so many things with the starting SCV, the the scouting Reaper. I didn't even make a Helen or anything else. And then with a single Liberator, I scouted basically everything I need to know. And of course, in um, in in lower MMR games the what you scout might be a bit different from what it actually is because people they make mistakes or they're trying some weird mind game or uh, they do their build wrong even but some things that you scout will still be good to react to for example if you see this guy as four gases but imagine you, you play against a, a, a 4.5k protoss he's playing exactly what christianer does here but instead, he has six gases. So he's going to be banking a lot of gas. And you're going to be mind gamed, thinking that uh, he's playing a high textile, so you make tanks. In that case, if you react to it, and I don't mean overreact, but you just properly react. So let's say you get some tanks, or uh, you know, let's say you just expand a lot. If this guy ruins his build by mining from three more gases than he should, he is also going to have like, I don't know, 10 zealots less for hit his attack or whatever. So even if you react, even if the, 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 the Protoss mind games you, it's still a good thing to know what you're scouting. In in the worst case, if that Protoss has all the gas and he's mind gaming you, even if it's on accident, he's still messing up his own build order. And if you react properly, then it's still going to be a good situation for you, even if the guy is messing up his build order. The most important thing is to not overreact there. Like if, 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 I, uh, if I see a fourth gas here, in the start and i assume it's stalker colossus which it should be and i do like a i don't know i make a second factory and i do a big tank call in now that's a very dedicated potential overreaction because i'm really banking on the fact that he's playing stalker colossus but if i would just play you know faster third cc good macro game against colossus get get my vikings up then i'm actually just in, in, a, in, a, in a really good position still because i'm not overreacting i'm just reacting to the situation i'm, I'm not blind countering uh anything in particular and and yeah that, that's it guys e even this for example this drop is is good scouting uh, when i saw the lack of gases i thought it was really gonna be like a zero forge push but with this i, I scout the forge in this case i even snipe it but even scouting that forge means his push or attack if it would come is going to be less dedicated All right so, so, so the rest of this game is just going to be a, a bit of a brawl uh, between Bio and Protoss, which I do win in the end, of course. I, 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 would, I would never lose a game of StarCraft. Anyway, guys, I hope this was really useful. Uh, I, if you have any questions about scouting, please ask me. I might do some other scouting guides on other matchups in the future or maybe make some additional content to this video. But I hope you guys enjoyed it a lot. Don't forget to like and subscribe, like the video and subscribe. And uh, see you guys next time. Adios.